Hi, I'm Jana Tarjev, the functional family nurse practitioner, and I would like to address today adrenal fatigue and stress. A lot of patients who come to my, to my practice um, do have some level of adrenal burnout. What does it mean? A lot of times, uh, testing with the four-point saliva cortisol would be great. Uh, actually, in one of the cases, um, LabCorp did cover the testing for four-point saliva cortisol testing. But if you don't have insurance, or your insurance does, it doesn't cover labs like ZRT, um, the first thing would be to check your ACTH and cortisol level in the morning. So that this test should be done before 8 a.m. ideally, but the latest 9 a.m. And uh, this test measures the total cortisol level. So basically it doesn't tell me what's the free unbound cortisol and what is um, bound cortisol. It just gives me the sum of cortisol. But what's the point of it if it's not very reliable? Well, a lot of times I see very low blood level cortisol in the morning. The good thing that insurance, if properly coded, the insurance will cover this test. So what does it mean to have a low level of cortisol? It means your total level of cortisol is low. So if your total level is, of cortisol is very low, for example, on the range from six to 50, your cort I mean, I'm sorry, from six to 20, your level of cortisol is 5.5 .5 or 6.0, it means your bottom low. It means that total cortisol is low and as well, most likely your free unbound cortisol is low too. So what do we do? We also correlated with the ACTH. So ACTH is the adrenal corticotropin hormone that is produced in your brain. It kind of yells at your adrenal glands to make more cortisol. Well, it's kind of like TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone is also made in your brain and it also yells at your thyroid to make thyroid hormone. So what happens when you, when your brain is not yelling loud enough at your thyroid and at your adrenal glands to make, at your thyroid to make your thyroid um, hormone and at your adrenal glands to make cortisol, a lot of times we get into a very, very tired state. So we are fatigued every day, all day. And of course, this cortisol only shows me the one point what's going on in the morning, but the fact is that the cortisol in the morning drawn by should be the highest. So when you wake up, you should have the highest level of cortisol that slowly during the day gets like into the curve, the highest, and then it goes lower and lower until it subsides and the lowest is um, around bedtime when you go to sleep. So when you don't have high cortisol in the morning, it's a, as equally as bad as having high cortisol in the morning because you may have brain fog, inability to wake up until you have a couple cups of coffee. You just kind of drag yourself through the day and you cannot... You can't get the motivation or energy to, I mean, you do things that you have to do, but it's, it's very hard to do them. What is causing symptoms like that? A lot of times it's high levels of stress. It could be chronic high levels of stress or temporary high levels of stress. For example, um, going through the death or a very, um, or disease of a loved one could cause you to have stress like that, um, or having stress, stresses, stress at work. For example, accountants, they have high stress of, or at work during the tax season. So you can only imagine what kind of burden it, um, this kind of stress has on their bodies later when they push, push, push through this tax season to April 15th. And then all of a sudden, when ev every deadline is met, they found themselves crashing, getting sick more often, not able to have proper weekends. Also, even people who push themselves through the week, Monday through Friday, I see so many patients who, who push themselves and they work hard and they can't put in 10, 12 hour work days only to find themselves laying in, be in bed flat and not being able to do or accomplish anything on the weekend. So basically they're trying to recharge themselves. 
So it's like a battery and the bank account or bank account actually could be a better analogy. If you have a bank account and you keep taking and taking and taking out of it, of the account, eventually you won't have anything to take out. If you have to deposit into the bank to take something out, basically that's the simple truth. A lot of times adrenal fatigue could be happening due to the burnout that's caused by undiagnosed or undertreated thyroid issues. So if you were diagnosed with thyroid problem or hypothyroidism and you were put on thyroid hormone but it's not good enough or not high enough for you, probably sometimes with time this under treatment can cause adrenal fatigue too. Well, um, in medical literature you can find it under um, HPA axis dysfunction, the hypothalamus pituitary axis dysfunction. So if you do decide to look into the studies, just Google um, HPA axis dysfunction and, and see what shows up on PubMed. So what do we do about it? So well, it depends on the stage of adrenal fatigue. So usually, um, I don't see actually people in the first stage, usually it's stage two, stage three or stage four of adrenal burnout or HPA excess dysfunction. And I would definitely, if you can afford it or you think, or your uh, cortisol levels show up high or normal on um, blood test, I would definitely um, invest into the saliva, four point saliva cortisol test to see what exactly, what kind of stage of, um, of adrenal burnout you are in. But if you cannot do that, you can try to take adrenal adaptogens just like ashwagandha, cordyceps mushrooms, ginseng and see if they're gonna help. I actually drink right now tea. If you're not pregnant or breastfeeding, you can drink Egyptian, or if you don't have high blood pressure, you can drink Egyptian licorice tea. Um, I guess it's backwards, but hopefully you can read. Um, by Yogi, it gives me tons of energy when coffee doesn't do anything <laughs> for my energy levels and um, desire to work and work out for that matter. But if that doesn't help, then probably doing adrenal glandulars, but you have to be careful with those because there are different ones on the market. And definitely I would uh, consult a healthcare provider who is knowledgeable in adrenal issues and uh, what to prescribe or advise you to take. Uh, because sometimes you can make, you, you may make, make more harm than good if you do it by yourself. But if adaptogens don't help, then the other options would be the adrenal glandulars and also um, very low level of cortisol, prescription medication, Cortaf. And you can read the book if you're interested. It's on Amazon, uh, The Uses of Cortisol by Dr. Jeffries, who, have, who, has, who had treated tons of patients and helped a lot of patients to get pregnant and feel better. And he actually saw this gray area that um, he addressed because unfortunately when you go to an endocrinologist, they only look at the black or white um, areas. They look into very high levels of cortisol and ACTH or very low levels of cortisol and ACTH. There is nothing in the middle. Well, a lot of us walk and work and have the symptoms that are consistent with this gray area of HPA axis dysfunction. And there is more and more support in the literature and research about that. But unfortunately, when I did send one of my patients to the endocrinologist with the Merck manual excerpt that uh, she may qualify for the secondary adrenal insufficiency diag diagnosis, um, her symptoms were disregarded and dismissed and she um, she didn't get treated. So find someone knowledgeable, address your issues and treat yourself from, um, from basics to the more advanced level, depending on how long have you been suffering. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to help if I can in, the, in this short comment scenario. Okay, bye.